Good afternoon. And could we but wait an hour, we would enjoy in your time watching you heal each other. Such a beautiful sight. If you could only see the light radiating from around your world as all of you hold the shared intention of sending what you have been calling healing, but what we call love. Love is the healing balm that will change your world, but let us give it the true definition. This one has learned to call love lack of separation. Heed this definition. Many of you are still caught in the human version, the human understanding of what love is. Human love has conditions at times and at other times is unconditional. You know how unconditional love feels. Not all of you had parents who were able to bestow upon you unconditional love. Some of you have been the recipients of this kind of human love. Many of you as parents understand unconditional love and send it to your children. But are there not times when they push your buttons and there are those moments when, oh my, the human side wants to step in. And yet there is always that connection with those you love the most, with those with whom you share an intimate human bond that helps you to understand lack of separation. This is love. It is your very foundation, your true nature, not the human love. You are human, yes, but that is a temporary situation that will come and go as you live and experience multiple lifetimes. For yes, you do go round and round and have many experiences, not just the current role that you are playing. But you are also so much more than the role you are playing now, so much more than the costume you are wearing. And we speak not of the clothing, but of the body. The body breaks down. It is set aside. But what enlivens the body is eternal without end, without form. And yet it takes on form for a while for the experiences. That which has no form cannot be divided. Therefore, you are indivisible, totally connected to what? To divine love your true nature. We will not dive too deeply into this, for there are more mundane topics we wish, wish to speak to you about this afternoon. First and foremost, the gratitude that was expressed to you earlier about your contributions. You overcame the fear that comes with the human being of holding on to what you think is yours, and money is the greatest test of that, is it not? It is a great separator. But in giving, you dissolved a bit of that fear. In giving, you are making a difference. It does not matter if you gave or not. What you did was paid more attention to your connection to be present here in this higher energy and soak some of that up for the difference you can make going forward. And we thank you for that. The money makes no difference to us, of course, but the energy, the upliftment that your energetic field, your persona experienced as a result of setting aside the fear and giving generously of the heart did raise your vibration. Hear us. This is the theme of this afternoon's discourse. Evolution. You are here for the evolution 
of humanity. But how can I, how can one person make a difference, you ask? Yes, it is true. You are but one of more than 7 billion beings in a body. But we see you not as human beings. We see you as cells in one human body. Cells, billions of them in the body of humanity. We wish to give you now an analogy that will help you to understand how we in the higher realm see you. Many of you we know have flown on your aircraft and you have done so in the night time. As you approach your airports, your final destination, as you look out your windows in a populated area, what is it that you see? You see highways and roads crisscrossing with traffic on it. Have you not seen this? Traffic lights moving, synchronized, orderly. And what do you call your network of roads? You call these arteries. When we look upon the body of humanity, we see billions of beings as cells moving in the arteries of the body of humanity. Our greatest desire is that this body evolve and grow in awareness of the one body. Now we return to the analogy of cells in an actual artery. Do they fight with each other at times? And what happens then? What do you call this then? You do not need to be a medical professional to understand the term cancer. This is when the very cells in one body fight against each other. This may seem like an analogy that does not touch you, but we will bring it a bit closer to home. We know that, that, that there is not a one of you who has not been driving your car on an artery that you would know as a road or highway when another cell in your greater body cut you off or tried to get in your lane. And what is the normal human reaction, we dare ask? And you know what it is. Some of you in a very human mode, in an act of being totally human, will either speed up, not allow this, or curse that other one. We know you have been there. You need not feel bad about this. We sit back and smile and say, there they go again. But we use this analogy for a most important reason. Can you imagine what would happen in your human body if your cells, in rushing to carry oxygen to the different organs where they are needed, would bump into each other, curse each other, stop and say, how dare you try to get ahead of me? Why, my goodness, all of you would dissolve. There would be no harmony. There would be more dis-ease than you could deal with. The body would collapse. And this is what you are experiencing in your world now. Lack of harmony, lack of understanding that you are all cells in one body. Yes, that other in a car may not understand this. It is a natural human reaction to react as you do. But the theme today is evolution. We move on from the car example to the many examples where one human holds on to what you see as yours, is afraid to give, is afraid to cooperate with others, for that is the old human nature. Humanity is evolving. That is why you come back lifetime after lifetime, Elsewise, what is the point? Evolution is a natural process. You see this in the weed that comes up through cement when the cement has cracked. 
Life is about growth. All of life seeks the light. You are all part of the flow of life. There is a part of you that is always seeking the light. That part of you that has not evolved yet to the point where you see that you are here to cooperate with all cells in the body human, beyond your personal body, simply need to refocus, set the intention, I will do better for if I do not change and cooperate every moment of my life in any activity and see all other humans as equal to me as a cell in the one body of humanity, we will continue to experience a cancer. You are here today to raise awareness through your efforts for those who may be thinking of leaving this lifetime. And we understand that this will come to almost all of you in a lifetime. We can see your thoughts. We are well aware that there is not a one of you who has not at some point wanted off the planet. This is part of the challenge of being human to face ups and downs. You knew coming into this experience that it would be quite challenging. There are some of you, all of you brave, hear us well, but some of you who had a chat with we, your guides, and we advised you, are you sure you want to take on this particular assignment? For example, going into a body with not the same wiring per se as others, those that might have what you would understand in human terms as mental illness. Are you sure, beautiful soul, that you want to go into a body that will see the world so differently that it will knock you off balance? It may cause you such a challenge that you will want to return early. And those souls are the ones who say, I am up for the challenge, send me in. I will do my best. And in some cases, the challenge, as predicted, is a bit much. And they decide to return to the expanded state of light that all of you are before completing the task of helping evolution until the body gives out on its own. This you would understand in human terms as suicide. Hear us well, all souls who return to the light are surrounded by love. There is no punishment. However, there is awareness at the individual yet part of the whole awareness. It became a bit overwhelming. I made a decision and now there is no going back. And do you know one of the first thoughts that arises in awareness to those that arrive in this state is, how may I now help from here? For that is the natural urging of the soul. This one has had the experience many times of communicating with those who have passed earlier than the body was ready, passed by their own hands as you would understand it. And each one of them came with a message for their families. I am fine. There is regret for the pain caused, but they are not suffering. They are wanting to let you know they are with you and they want to help others as a result. Evolution continues, whether here or in the hereafter. But those of you who are suffering now did choose this entire life experience. Granted, there are many humans who play into your role. You cannot control what happens in your life. You are part of one big web of all that is. And there are challenges that come from others' use of free will. As a result, the challenges at times become compounded. This is why we tell you, you are never given more than you can handle. 
You are given support systems here and more support than you are aware of in your deepest moments of grief from across the veil. May the energy that you are feeling now cause the clouds to part enough that you can feel the love we are pouring at you now, should you be in a place now where you wish to leave early. And we urge you, stay for a while, stick it out. This too shall pass. The clouds will part in moments to show you there is a light that never goes out. Now look within and find it here. And here you will find the connection with us. Many of you, as you have read the headlines in recent days, have wished to leave the planet. You no longer want to be part of a world where people can take up arms and do harm to many in an instant. We do not wish to bring the energy down, but you know of which we speak right now. A singular action by one confused being, and we use the word confused in a spiritual sense, for anyone who would do harm to another is ignorant of the fact you are all the light of spirit in expression. No human who is aware of this would ever harm another. What you are experiencing as you read your headlines is one who is so completely blinded. And we speak not of just the one who made your headlines in this week and prior weeks, but anyone who has forgotten, ah, uh, yes, I am also a soul. I came here for the challenges, but here as well, no human comes deliberately to do acts of evil. We would like to show you how evolution takes place with understanding. And we would like you to picture an edifice, a building that is crumbling and suddenly it falls down and many are hurt by this. And you say, what a tragedy, a collapse of the building. And you wish to blame someone and you go in to investigate. You clear away the rubble and what do you find? You find that it was not the building itself, but the foundation was weak. The foundation was unable to uphold the weight of the building. And so you put a bit of plaster on it and erect another building. Did you solve the issue, the challenge? Not at all for it was not the plaster, but was what was underneath the cement foundation that was not good. This is what you are experiencing in humanity as a whole now. The foundation is failing to uphold your purpose here. We must go back to the very foundation. You may throw blame all you want at others, you should take action when evil is perpetuated to ensure that it no longer happens. But at the deepest level, dear souls, the foundation of understanding, you are all souls, all cells in one body of humanity is what is lacking. Programs such as those described to you at the beginning of this event today, where you start at the younger ages and let all know you are all connected. You are not only human. Setting aside antiquated visions of what divinity is, coming to know that the divine flows through all of you, and therefore, every one of you is worthy of love. This must begin in the home. This must begin within each of you. This takes training to undo many years of human conditioning that has been holding you separate. 
and I hear you now, and we feel you now, but this will not change overnight. And you are correct. Evolution is ongoing. We show you now the spiral. This one was talking earlier that at these charitable events, the amount of contributions to these wonderful charities has grown at a scale like a nautilus shell. This is evolution. As each of you come to know, I am a cell in the body of humanity, which is one cell in the body of all that is, the one being. All of you will evolve as well exponentially and you will bring with you others for all of you serve as examples. Are you not overcoming cancer in the physical body? This is evolution. Now we move to the spiritual body. Do you understand that we do not despair as we watch what unfolds in your human world. We see these as, yes, tragedies from a human viewpoint, but opportunities for paradoxically, this is the human way that you must be shaken up a bit to change. The building is falling down. The foundation must be rebuilt from the ground up. May you hold in your mind the vision of those arteries. The next time you fly, will you look down upon all of those cars on the highway and wish that they all cooperate with each other? You have rules that say, this is how you drive. You need rules when so many of you have different belief systems. In our world, there is only one rule, love, be this, lack of separation, feel this, come to know this as your true nature and evolution will naturally result. Watch a flower, it grows with no effort, it is its very nature to seek the light. Get your human conditioned reactions out of the way and allow the soul to do what it does. To greet every human it encounters, soul to soul. We are giving this one a phrase that she has learned to say as a result of witnessing the little puppy she has named Nellie, who greets all with a beautiful smile, wanting to kiss and embrace and love them all. And the phrase this one has taken on, be like Nelly. May you bring to mind someone in your circle who is like Nelly and be like them. Perhaps they have passed. Can you honor them in this way? Trust us, they have the higher perspective now. They understand completely unconditional love. Ask for their help to help you change your reactions so that you do not react so much in the human way, but in a harmonious way, more aligned with the soul. We dare say it will change your life. We have gone on and on a bit, and we will come back again to this theme before we, as you put it, wrap this up. But we would be remiss if we did not answer a few questions, for always there are some prepared that will help you to understand the very nearness of us as we speak to you now. And so we invite the one known as Bev to unmute herself so that you may hear her questions. And we guarantee you, we already know the questions that will be asked. You may ask the first one, Miss Beverly. Thank you, Sanaya. This is from a hospice nurse who wonders if our medications and interventions 
at the end of life make a difference and help people, or does the soul leave the body before these symptoms get uncomfortable? Those of you who have witnessed a loved one passing in a hospice situation have seen a bit of that withdrawing from the current situation. There is a reason that many pass in a state of what appears to be unconsciousness. But here as well, the soul does not lose consciousness. The soul is beginning already to adjust to this new experience of being free without the boundaries of the body. Oftentimes, you will hear them communicating with loved ones who have come to help them across the veil. Moments of lucidity. And the question is, do your efforts to provide comfort through medications or through your presence make a difference? Most definitely, but not only to the one in the bed. Hear us that the soul does not suffer, but any effort you can make to reduce suffering helps not only the physical vessel, but also those around. And the more there is a harmonious state in the entire field of those lending support to one who is in a transitional phase will raise the energy of the whole, making it more possible for those of you to have a shared experience and understand that there is nothing at all to fear, that this transition to the next state of awareness is one of the most joyous experiences of your ongoing life. It is quite difficult to watch and witness the passing of one that seems to linger and linger. These dear ones are labor pains as you are birthed into the next lifetime. In the astral realm, as you would understand it, we thank you all for this important question. Is there another? Uh, yes, several people have asked the same question. For those who die a very sudden death, like the, the, the recent shootings, does the soul leave the body before the trauma? Most definitely. There is a bifurcation, an awareness at a soul level and an awareness within the physical body for a while. A dual awareness. My goodness, I am in the body, yet I am out of the body. This higher perspective knows now I was never fully that body. Oh my goodness, there is a witnessing of this. Suffering does not take place, but the body still reacts. We do not wish to give you a negative vision, but have you not seen some creatures when they are in the process of dying, the physical soul of that creature has left and yet there is still movement in the body. That is the consciousness of each of the cells continuing to do their job until the soul has fully left the body. But suffering is a human experience. Pain is an experience of the body. Having more and more of the soul awareness at the higher perspective, the suffering lessens. Instantly across the veil, all pain is forgotten, all suffering left aside as one completely steps into awareness of the total connection of which we have spoken this evening that you would understand as love. We would like you to know that souls who pass as a group find themselves as a group in this awareness and want nothing more than to let their loved ones know, we are here, we are supporting you, we are all right. How may we help you? And then they go their individual ways to reunite with loved ones who greet them. No one passes alone. Is there another question? And we ask all of you to send love to this one to build up the energy. For, for we have been quite lengthy this afternoon, but wish to answer a few more of your valuable questions. We thank you. Thank you. Another question asked by several people today is death by suicide ever part of a soul plan or is it always a free will decision here? You will hear this answered by different beings. Hear us well. All channels must channel our information through their belief system. We have done our best 
to force feed this one, the awareness that souls do not come with the deliberate intention of leaving early. Please go back to our earlier explanation and you will hear that in some humans, that path as known by the soul before incarnating is more challenging than others. The soul did know there may be a higher propensity to want to leave earlier than for others, but they are not sent with the goal of doing this on purpose. This is a tricky situation that you would understand as free will as a gift, but also what you would call a curse. It is not a curse from our point of view. It is yet another decision that led to a consequence. Now, what will you do with that? This is why those who have passed by this myth method so want to continue helping. They wish to continue evolving and evolution happens whether in a body or not. And another please. Okay, uh, Debbie would like to know about orbs. Are these sent as a sign uh, from the higher realms or our loved ones? What is their purpose? Their purpose is to get you to know that you are not only physical. And we have told you for many years now that your technology would allow you to know yourselves as more than your physical bodies. And was it not with the advent of your digital cameras that you began to see orbs? You may now self-experiment, practice self-science, call on the beings in spirit to bring you more of these delightful energetic fields that are forms of consciousness in many cases your guides in some cases your loved ones who have passed who are now visible as patterns of energy that you call orbs but they are not only static balls that you capture with a camera use your digital video cameras and you will see them crossing your screen like a shooting star all of you are beautiful stars. We will end with this question for it has a bit of a magical feel, does it not? And get you thinking outside the box of it is only a physical world. Orbs are a way that you can see a bit between the worlds. For even in our world, we need not take on the form of a non-physical being, a, an ethereal spirit being. We know each other as a light. What is a star? be it a star that appears to be in one position or a shooting star. It is a self-luminous light. And that is what all of you are. And yet, how do you separate one light from another? You do not. You cannot. All of you derive your light from the one field which has no limits, which has no boundary. You are the flashing, shining brilliance of this one light. As you grow, as you evolve, you will greet each other in this awareness. For now, perhaps you look upon each other from within your own somewhat dim light. Trust us, hear us, as you turn up your own life through understanding I am a cell in the one body of humanity, which is one cell in the body of all that is. Your light will naturally brightly shine, shine brighter. That is your task, to turn up the light that has become a bit dimmed through conditioning of living with other humans who only thought of their own tribe. Each of you is equally important, equally valuable. How do you compare one light in human form? You do it through its dimness and its brightness, its luminosity. From here, we see only brightness and trust us. The overall light of your universe, your earthly realm has gone up and the universe as a whole, which is but one universe within a multiverse. We do not want to blow your minds today, but you could not wrap your mind around the brightness from which all of you derive your own light. May you see differently and go forth from this session radiating a bit brighter. 
And when you wish to react in a very human nature to others who did a very human thing to you, may you set the intention now that moving forward, something within you feels a snag and you say, aha, this is my opportunity to react differently and shine brighter. We are so very grateful for your efforts, everything that you do to help others come to know and feel and realize, which means to make real this connection, this indivisibility that is you at the deepest level is well worth the effort. We honor you. We celebrate you. We will welcome you home with loving arms, but we encourage, encourage all of you to ask your own team of guides for assistance, to call on the angels when you wish to leave early. They will help you. You are here for a reason. Those who have left early are still helping you, but we wish you to stick around for a while, for you make a difference. You are so very loved. We bid you good afternoon.